brave enough to find the life you want and be courageous enough to chase it. One of the many quotes you find on the handle of one of Nigeria's biggest TV content exports. Today, we are thrilled to have the incredibly talented and versatile actress, producer, and screenwriter, Funke Akindele. Grace our studio on the spotlight with Ace Radio host, Joyce Oyemua. Funke Akindele, a household name in the world of Nollywood, has captivated audiences with her unmatched talent and infectious energy from her breakout role in the iconic TV series I Need to Know to her recent triumphs in producing and starring in the widely acclaimed sitcom Jennifer's Diary. Funke has become synonymous with excellence in the Nigerian television landscape with highly compelling storytelling in her productions including My Siblings and I, Ayatoro Town, Indu Street, Omar Ghetto, Battle on Booker Street, She Must Be Obeyed, and her latest iconic brainchild, a tribe called Judah. How did this journey start? What thorns has she had to deal with on the path to the glory of today? What lessons has she picked on the way? What else are in the works? Join us as we explore the journey of this prolific actress, discussing her celebrated roles, her creative process, and her latest TV endeavors that continue to captivate audiences worldwide. Get ready for an engaging and insightful conversation with the one and the only Funke Akindele on the Spotlight with Joyce. Hello, welcome. My name is Joyce Onyemoa, and you are on the spotlight with me. And today I have a phenomenal lady. She has built a sublime career and famed for many of the movies or cinematic productions you have come to love. Jennifer's Diary, Ayeturu in the Street, and in fact, much more. She's not stopping, nothing is stopping her. She's here today because she has, again, outdone herself. You'll find out in a moment. It's, it's indeed my pleasure to welcome Jennifer. So that's how I know you. You know how it is where you're, you're on the internet and then we practically forget your government name. Yes, that's true. Because you have created such beautiful work and people become, I don't know, taken by the art. Exactly. That's exactly how I like to put it. It is indeed a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. You look well. You're aging well. Yes. I remember you from... Uh, I need to I know. Need to know. <laughs> you have, to you've had a career run. So talking about your sublime career, you have now created another blockbuster, A Tribe Called Judah. Yes. Tell us about it. Oh, a Tribe Called Judah is so special to me because it's in memory of my late mom. She passed on February this year, and before she passed on, I, I, I had written the story, but I didn't know she, she was going to pass on. And while acting, you know, I, I could feel her presence. I acted like my mom in the film. Can you imagine? And I'm imagining. all the emotions before she passed on, you could see it in the movie, and she passed on. So it's so special to me. And it wasn't me. in anticipation of her passing. No, no, no. Oh. While, re while, I, while I wrote it. Yeah. Yes, but when she passed, it was when I filmed it. After her passing on, I filmed it. So I could feel her presence in it. And it really shows the mother love, the mother's love, I mean. Because my mom, she can do anything she could for her children, you know. She raised us well. We went to the best schools. She's a single parent. And a tribe called Judah is celebrating single parents. The mothers out there that struggle so hard to take care of their children. You know, a lot of women are judged, especially the ones that have children from different men. So a tribe called Judah features Jadida. That's, I play Jadida Judah. She has five boys from five different men from five different tribes. Wow. What a storyline. You can't imagine. So people will be like, oh, she's been around the world. Well, if you put it like that. You know, <laughs> but you don't know the story. You don't, don't know, know how she got into this. You know, everybody has got a backstory. We just have to, you know, love people, celebrate them, encourage them. That's what a tribe called Judah is all about. And raise your children well, because if you do not raise them well, there's a repercussion for it. You know, hearing you talk about another story, you've created many stories. You are known for the stories that you tell. 
What would you, in your view, regard as your personal milestones? I mean, we think we know what your milestones are, but you alone would know it differently. Okay, well, the turnaround, the event, you know, the landmark, things that made things turn around for me majorly is um, evolving the Jennifer brand. You know, we started out with um, the first Jennifer, the village girl that came into Lagos and she wanted to be a big girl, big skill, that's how Jennifer calls it. <laughs> then we moved on to um, the return of Jennifer. You understand, we have the trilogy and now we came up with the TV show that's every, um, Jennifer's Diary. So the fact that I could be, I could able to work on that brand, let it brand evolve and it, you know, touch lives, touch issues affecting young people mm. out there, everybody, the family, you know, prefer solution. That actually changed everything for me, you know. It made me realize that this is a big deal. You are, you are a vessel being used to tell the African stories, you know, to shed more light on issues affecting the lives of young people especially. What's the so that inspiration behind Jennifer. I think I find that one to be funny, but of course I don't miss the stories you're trying to tell, but I wonder whether there's something else there that I don't see besides the comedy. Okay, the inspiration behind Jennifer, the brand is, um, we have lots of Jennifers out there. We have lots of young people out there, females especially, that you know, they get carried away when they, you know, when you send them to school, when they start a project, they get carried away. So that's why I brought in the character. You know, I want you to laugh. I want you to yeah. see this character that, okay, she's funny, she's got dreams, she's got aspirations. But along the line, she gets carried away. So when you see this kind of person, you see the mistakes she takes, she makes, I mean, and you, tr you, you try your best not to make such mistakes. So that's the inspiration behind Jennifer. It's very interesting to see how long you've been in this industry. I, for one, share this memory from, the memory of you from I Need to Know. And you've been here for so long. I'm just curious as to what's your staying power? As consistency, you know, staying You know focused. a lot of people say that. Like, that, I don't even know what it means at this point. Uh, my sister, let me tell you, it's <laughs> very important. When you say consistency, you, just, you don't just stay, you don't just say it, you do it. You take the bold step. Mm. You, how do you stay consistent? Like now you come in and you, they call you, okay, come. You have to interview from Kakinele today, and you're very tired. You understand? You're very tired. And you look at the time, okay, I'm supposed to interview from around 4 p.m., and you, the tiredness starts from 10 a.m. in the morning. You just set your alarm, try to sleep for, t for two hours. Turn off your phone, or t put the phone aside. You have to be disciplined. Sacrifice. Yes, sacrifice, discipline, consistency. You have to come and do it. There's nothing like, I am tired. There's not like, oh, I thought today's my day off. If you want to, you, you, can, you can be successful, but you can be outstandingly successful if you're very consistent, if you're disciplined, if you're focused. So that is what keeps me going. I remember where I'm coming from. I don't want to go back to, no, no, I want to keep moving on, you know. I want to empower a lot of people, so I stay focused. What are some of, uh, you know, success often comes with its own pressures. And you are successful. We don't see your pressures. You don't appear to have pressures. So disappoint me. Tell me you have some. Of course, darling, <laughs> I do. I'm human. OK, for me, the, 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 the pressure is, you know, you just have to keep doing it right. You know, I, I, I actually push myself to write the stories well. You know, when you, when you see a tribe called Judah, you'd be like, where did she get the story from? Oh my, oh my days. From Battle of Booker Street to this, from Mogeto to this. What is happening? So I push myself. I sleep and eat my work. Even when I'm in the shower, you know, as I'm scrubbing, I'm thinking about it. So the collision not walking. I think you should just honk. And the wife comes to open the door. Yes. That is what I do for a living. So I push myself to do, but there are times I get tired, my sister, and I leave everything. I take a yeah, walk, take a break. I go on holidays, I sleep well. I'll tell you, do not wake me up, I have to sleep. And when challenges come, you just have to do your best to surpass them. You don't stay put and let the challenges swallow you up. Mm -hmm. They're bound to come, so you have to keep moving. Do you have a source from where you draw inspiration? Hmm. Source? I don't oh, want to be. Is it a person? That, that one can be a first, source. The major, the major thing is, for me, is things happening around me. You know, I'm very, very attentive. I'm very observant. So things happening around me, I draw inspirations from them. Mm. You look successful. You smell it. <laughs>
But I want to talk about the failures. Have you ever failed? Of course. Oh, well, let's talk about that because, you know, it's not like time. I'm really curious as to your failures, but, you know, many times when we see successful women, particularly women who make success look easy, we assume that they haven't failed. So you would really, really be encouraging people if you have something to tell. Okay, for me, if you don't fail, you can't be successful. You have to keep trying. You have to keep trying. Like when a child is trying to walk, the child will walk small and just fall off. Mm. You know, so yeah. it's normal for you to fall but you just have to pick yourself and rise again. For me, I see failure, I see challenges, I see obstacles as part of life. My mom raised me like that. Yeah. Like uh, my mom would say, if you do not fail, if you do not fall, you cannot succeed. Yeah. So you have to keep going. And note says, I do not even see the failure. If you ask me now, can you tell me one failure? I don't see it as a failure. No, maybe my personal life, yes. But personal life, you know, marriage stuff, I just, I just take it as it comes. Yeah. My mental health is very important. My career is very important, darling. I have to make an impact. I have to empower a lot of people. I have to inspire young people out there. I have to stay strong for my children, my siblings. Why am I leaving? I have a purpose. So my head is up. Yes, I cry. Yes, I break down. But I cry. I just clean the tears, look into the mirror. Keep moving. Yeah. So that's it for me. The industry, has the industry been kind to you? Because you sound dogged, but I know that there are some women who have complained about the obstacles they encounter in the industry. Do you have any tale that may be similar, something you think is worth telling? Oh, yes, when I started my career, to get to this stage was pretty difficult. To get a role was pretty was was it difficult. Was a sexist thing? Oh, it no, a... no, 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 oh. no. I didn't, I didn't know. It wasn't a sexist thing. I'm talking about when I started as an actress, yeah. you know, attending auditions and, you know, trying to get a break. No, no's. I got a lot of no's. I can't even count the no's. It was just one yes that pushed me up here. I started, and that yes was with, I need to know. I attended auditions, I would read so well, and at the end of the day, I'm just an extra in a party scene. Yeah. Because it wasn't time for me yet. And I'll get home, I'll cry, my mom would tell me, my late mom would tell me, just keep doing it, clean your tears, go, move, move, move. But to those that don't have moms there, that's why I'm here now, to tell you that you can do it. You understand, if you don't have people that can tell you can do it, for me to be seated here today, to wear this trap called Judah T-shirt, to have Blockbuster, to be the highest grossing filmmaker, I think you can also do it. So That's I, just, I, just, I just keep moving, you understand? So the challenges came then, I didn't get the roles, I cried, I broke down, but one yes got me the I need to know role. Now take note, after the I need to know role, I thought I was made, you know, okay, after this BC, I'm gonna be called for roles, and no, I went back to, Zero level. I didn't get roles. No one, they didn't call me for big roles. I went back to auditions again. Yes. After being paid well, after being featuring, I need to know, a United Nations project. And I went back playing two scenes, three scenes. And boom, that day came. I picked up my script. I said, you have to make yourself the star. I started looking for money to produce. My mom was I going everywhere. We got the funds. I produced my first film, Ojo Ketala, the 13th day. And here I am today. So as a female, yes, I had challenges as a filmmaker. Okay. But the challenges of competitors or people that don't want you to get there or the male that feel, oh, you're a female, I don't see them. I just stay focused and do my thing. You have quite a vision. <laughs> We're off on a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> My name's Joyce. You're still on the spotlight, and our guest is Funke, Funke Akindele. Uh, Jennifer, that's what I would <laughs> love to call her. Um, you would pardon me if I saw you on the highway and said, Jennifer. That's fine. They call me Jennifer. I love it. Everybody calls me Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a video of you and your sons. I think you were on holiday. How are your sons? They're fine. Big boys now. I can see where your money is going. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your sons. Uh, you know, like, I think um, as a new mom, I can't even, can I call you a new mom? No. Yeah, because 
You have soldiers boys now. You have soldiers. <laughs> you have men for children. But, but tell us what being a mom is like when you have to compare, like, being a mom and working oh and being, a, being in the spotlight. Like, Oh, being a mom is sweet. It's wonderful. Having those cuties welcome you back from work, hugging you, kissing you. Stressing at you. Night, at night, <laughs> wanting to be in your bed, not wanting to go to their room. They don't stress you, those ninjas? They do. <laughs> they do. They run around, they roll, they kick. It's fun. It's fun. And juggling work with motherhood, it's pretty... It's sweet. It's mixed feelings, you know. You just have to do it. Yep. It doesn't stop. Life keeps <laughs> going on. But I want to say a big thank you to my siblings, um, to their aunties, their nannies, wonderful people. You know, they've been there for me all this while. So if I have a big workload, you know, they, my siblings step in to take care of them with the nannies. So, well, fine. Everybody's doing well and I can balance. I'm trying. When but, did you start writing? Oh, when did I start writing? I think, um... From secondary school. Oh, wow. So from way back, neat. yeah. From way back. From way back. A lot, long time ago. You write, you produce, you're an actress. I act, and I'm, and I'm self taught. You, know. you are? Yes, I studied law. So, <laughs> <laughs> writing, <laughs> acting, entertainment is just in my blood. I actually studied law because my father wanted, wanted me to be a lawyer. I wanted to do entertainment. My dad would be like, you will still study law. I want you to be a lawyer. So I did law because for my dad. But entertainment isn't me. I love everything about entertainment. You know, I love arts. It's, it's something mm. I eat and sleep. It's brilliant that you say self-taught because I think uh, there are many young people out there who are looking for how to learn, how to become something that they admire. And I wonder whether they can teach themselves, if they take it seriously enough, just the way you've done. I mean, yes. you went to law school, yes. got done with that, and you're like, well, this is who I want to be, and here I'm going to labor in the art. And that's what you've done. Yeah. And you're here today. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, it's very important to know what you want for yourself, you know. And if you don't know, it's not everybody that knows what they want to do. Mm. And that's why people like us, we are there, you know, we can help you. We can help you discover your talent, nurture it. I have the Jennifer Foundation, and there we help young people to nurture their talents. You know, we bring them on board, we train them, you know, we start them up with what they want to become. We help them to discover their talent. You know, I, I don't like seeing people, young you know, youths hanging around, being idle. A lot of them see me as a disciplinarian, and she's so tough. She's a workaholic, she'll make you do it, she'll drive you. Yeah. Well, it's good to be Focus. It's, it's good to be useful, to do something good for yourself. It will tell, it will help you. You know, they say the Gen Z's, the bodies, they don't want to stress. Like, um, there's somebody working with me and she's like, I think the workload is getting too much. I'm like, oh, you just started, girl. You know, <laughs> get to do it. Yes, it's good to, to relax, you know. But you have to stay focused. You have to know what you want for yourself. You have to empower yourself. That's what I try to do with the young people out there. I'm self-taught. I love to write. I love to act. I, I supervise all departments for a tribe called Judah. I even battle on Booker Street. I'm the production designer. I write. I act. I direct. I produce. It's just a gift. And I love to do it. But I have professionals on set. I work with the best hands. I work with the best hands. I work with a co-director, don't forget, because I'm acting. Yeah. I worked with um, Adi Olua Wu, that's Captain Dexy, this time around, on a tribe called Judah. And we gave it the best. You will love it when you see it. I would love to see it. You know, the more I hear you talk, the more I wonder, what are your principles, values? You've done this for so long. Um, I, I'm persuaded to believe that a handful of people hold you as a model, uh, a format that they can follow, a principle that they can pattern themselves by. But I'm asking you, what are your own values, your principles? What are the things that have kept you fixed, so focused that you have maintained your success? Okay, you can be, like I said earlier on, you can be successful. But you want to be outstandingly su successful. Do you want to stand out? Do you want people to be chewing your name in their mouth? Do you want them to be like, how are you doing? Then you have to give it your all. We keep saying, I give it my all. I give it my all. You have to forget the nails <laughs> when you're doing the dirty job. You have yeah. to forget the pretty looks. When you see me, uh, I can share some behind the scenes pictures. You'll be like, oh my God, 
Oh, you don't look it. You don't yeah. look this right now. You look so glammed up right now. You have to do the dirty job. You have to do it well. You know, you own the story. You own the vision. You can, you can only get people to do it for you, but you must stay focused. You must let them know that this is what you have, you yeah. want to do. So for me, the major thing that keeps me going, like I said earlier on, is consistency. Yeah. Discipline. Discipline is key. What are your aspirations for the future? I want to keep empowering people. I want to keep nurturing talents, help them to develop their talents. You sound like a mom at this point. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have the Jennifer Foundation. I have the School of Drama. Oh, yes. you do? Tell yes, us a little yes, bit yes, more yes, about yes. that. It's, it's, it used to be seen one school of drama, but we have the Funke Akindele Network now. So, okay. um, so it's more like the fan school of drama where we bring in young people. You know, hmm. Even if you're not young, if you're older, you can come join us. If you believe you have a talent, if you believe, oh, I want to get into the entertainment, the creative industry, I want to learn how film mm -hmm. is being made, I yeah. want to get into TV and film production, we can help you. You come for a three-month course, Will help you not your talent and you go where is it world. situated we have in ikeja and we have in imene state imene state is the main studio okay that's where you do the practical work yeah ikeja is more of the, th the theory and the dance class but amen is where you have to see where it's done the studios um when you watch our contents from omogeto to battle on Buka street to a tribe called judah 80 percent of this set is built in the studio we build all the sets even we go as far as building the markets, the, re the, the, the food courts. We build everything. So we come to train people That's there. Right. So aspiration, I want to help people, you know, in the industry. I want to pull their hands up. Because I went through a lot. I didn't get yeah. the opportunity that a lot of people are having now. So I, I want to keep giving opportunities to young talents out there. I want to make more stars. You know, we, we, want, to, we want more beautiful faces to come on board. It sounds, it sounds like talents. you're not going to be stopping anytime soon. Oh, no, no. And for myself, I just want to stay happy, raise my children well, yeah. enjoy what God has done for me, stay in good health. I just live you, a good life. I really wish you that. You. As much as I want to talk about your future projects, I want you to speak on a tribe called Judah. When does it launch and where are people going to see it? A tribe called Judah will be in cinemas from the 15th of December. It features a lot of stars. We have Timini Egbusson, we have Nsekbe Etim, we have Uzu Arokwe, myself, Uzi Usman from the north, Jide Kenai, Olumidi Owuru, Ebele Okaro, Istas Refethia Balogun. We have a lot of stars in the project and you guys will love it so much. You will laugh, get ready, you will cry. Oh. You will learn a lot of lessons, you know. That's what I try to do with my content. I yeah. try to pass the messages message. across to people. Any other future projects? Oh, lots of future projects. Lots. We're coming back with Jennifer. Let's yeah. see what, is, what has happened to Jennifer. We're coming back with everybody loves Jennifer. Keep your fingers crossed. We have the saga continues, Omogeto. We have She Must Be Obeyed. She Must Be Obeyed is coming back, a new season. So we have a, lots of projects to work on. What a number of feathers to your hat, really. But talking about feathers to your hat, politics. <laughs> uh, that was quite a move. So I'm curious to find out, did you always have a political ambition? Okay, I think what I have always had is leading. Oh. You know, being a leader, directing people on the right path. I'm human, yes, but I have the gifts of putting them on the right path. You know, some of my friends way back, they say, yes, they're domineering. Oh, yes, they're domineering. So I can be, I'm a good leader. I know what it takes to lead, you know, and I have the qualities. So for politics, for me, I just see it as what I've been doing for years. I've had the business, the company for close to 20 years. And I've been in the industry for over 25 years. And this is what I've been doing on a small scale, empowering young people. Like I said, we have the foundation where we're bringing people, we train them, you know. I've been doing this on a small scale. And, and you I'm thought so, politics was something? And I'm so something? passionate about children, women. Okay. Women out there, a lot of them are just laying fallow, they're idle, you know. Mm. We need to do something about them. Yeah. You see some women, if they don't see their husbands, they can't fend for themselves. We need to help them. A lot of them have talents. They have businesses they can start up with. They, they don't have the funds. We must come to their aid. You understand? Our children, our young adults, 
What are we doing about them? The youths are just laying fallow. They're into drugs. You see them on the streets. We complain about area boys. Why don't we get them in and train them properly mm. so they can add value to the country? So that is why I went into politics. I did it on a small scale. I'm ready to be a subordinate to my principal to help the women. I'm going in there for the women and children. But yes, we didn't get in there. This is just the start. Better days ahead, yes. You are going to go back again. Oh, yes. I'm studying. I'm under studying. I want to do okay. it right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to you being a vice president. Amen. <laughs> and I wish you well. Thank it's you. really been a, enjoyable sharing your presence uh, this afternoon and hearing you talk about your venture, ventures, and of course, a tribe called Judah. You've told us to expect laughter and tears. Yes. And I would say uh, the art that's uh, Funke Akindele has been a pleasure again really having you. Thank you very much for Thank your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have been speaking with Funke Akindele. I hope you have enjoyed the chat as much as I have. Keep your eyes on the spotlights. My name's Joyce. More stars are coming here.